what is going on everybody? Well, we are back for another Vlogmas episode and this is Vlogmas number eight. I'm gonna stop for just a second. If you have not watched Vlogmas number six, you need to go back and watch that. I'm gonna link that in a card above. And I went and bought my mom a brand new puppy. She absolutely loved it, but make sure you go watch that. And also for sure, make sure you watch Vlogmas number seven where Brenton and I sat down and we reacted to his very first YouTube video that was published many years ago and only five people saw before he deleted it. You could be one of the first people to ever see that if you go back and watch it now. So make sure you do that and I'll link that one above as well. Well, it'll actually be over here, but anyway, whatever. In today's Vlogmas, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be focusing on a tank build that is very similar to this build right here. So if you don't remember in a few videos back, which I'll also link in a card, I did this waterfall aquarium build where completely scaped out this tank and it turned out fantastic. Well, you guys asked, and I figured I'd go ahead and do it. People have been asking, what's a really cool tank scape you can do in a 10 gallon? So today, that's what we're gonna focus on. Make sure, if you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe, turn on those notification bells so you don't miss any of the content coming out here on the Christopher Scott channel. If you have not followed me on Instagram, make sure you do that as well. And uh, let's get into this today. asking me in comments, hey Chris, can you do a really cool 10 gallon tank build? So that's what we're going to focus on today. This is going to be a build on a budget. We're going to do this in a 10 gallon and by the time you're done and everything is in there, you should have enough space to add enough water to put about five gallons of water in the 10 gallon aquarium, which will be perfect for a betta or a couple of guppies or something like that. We need to start with first off picking up just a regular old glass aquarium from the pet store. Most big box pet stores have a dollar per gallon sale going on either now or will be soon so you can pick up a standard 10 gallon aquarium for only ten dollars now as far as filtration goes we're actually going to build our own filtration into this tank and i'm going to show you how we're going to do that in just a moment very first thing that we need to do is build a filter box for this tank so let's go ahead and get the tank let's get some plexiglass a marker a couple of other tools and let's get this build started all right guys well what we're using is a piece of scrap plexiglass i had left over and what we're going to do is we're actually going to score this with a plastic cutting knife to get ready to break it. And when you're breaking it, just simply put some pressure on it, it'll snap right in half. All right, guys. Well, I basically cut this piece of plexiglass down where it will sit about a little over halfway up the side of the tank glass. Now, if you look here real close, you should see two score lines going up and down here. The reason for the two score lines up and down is I've separated this in three equal parts. I'm gonna use that score line as a guide for where I'm gonna bend this plexiglass. And then throughout this plexiglass, you can see one that runs across ways here and then there's another one down here and really what that is for is that is my measurement the bottom one is for the pump and where the pump will sit the top one is where something else will sit this is where the filtration media will be under here this score line from side to side is where I'm going to drill my intake holes for this filtration system so we're gonna go ahead and do that now once we get those drilled then we'll start bending this and getting it installed All right, guys, well, we have our holes drilled. You're gonna wanna start heating this plexiglass on the opposite side of the score mark. That score mark is to allow the plastic to bend. And over time, as you heat this, it'll take a few passes, but it will actually start to soften up significantly. And after a few passes, what you're gonna wanna do is actually lay this on a table or a hard surface and start very gently bending. And as you can see, it's starting to bend just slightly. And what I'll do is as I'm bending, with one hand, I'll take this lighter and keep heating with the other. And eventually, you will get a full bend and you wanna make sure that this is up to a 90 degree angle, just like this. Let it sit, get nice and solid. Make sure you got it fully bent the way you need it to into that 90 degree angle. And we now have our plexiglass shaped on one side. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is the exact same thing on the other side. Once you have your column actually bent in the shape that you need it, you're gonna lay it into your tank where you want to place this and on the back of the tank on the outside of the glass you're going to trace over the shape of this now you're going to want to do this over the back as well as the bottom right where the plexiglass meets the glass the purpose of this this gives us a perfect shape of what this looks like which allows us to later place an exact bead of silicone right over top of this line giving us a perfect fit when we set it all right guys well here we have our column 
Golem. It's built. It is not fully cured yet. It'll take about 24 hours for that to happen. It is cured enough where we can start moving on to the next portions of this build. One of the things I guaranteed you was as we would talk about how much all this stuff costs. Number one is you have the glass aquarium. And the glass aquarium in, on a dollar per gallon sale, so you can pick these up for $10. Now, next thing let's talk about is the 100% silicone that's in here. If you buy the smaller squeeze tube, it's about $3. If you buy the one that goes into a caulk gun, it's about $6. So I spent $6 on this. So we're in this for $16 so far. Now the piece of plexiglass was a scrap piece of plexiglass that I had. So this is about $1.50 worth of plexiglass, to be honest with you, based on the size of it. You'd have to buy a sheet of it and keep it and use it for other builds. I will give you a little insider tip, just so you know. If you're at Home Depot or you're at Lowe's or a hardware store, whatever it may be, wherever you buy your stuff, if you come across a piece of plexiglass, and in fact, this piece right here was a part of this, but if you come across a piece of plexiglass that has the corner broken off of it or it's got a crack running through it, but the unbroken portion is large enough for whatever your project is, well, all you have to do is take that over to a manager and they'll usually discount it, especially at Home Depot. Like this particular piece was normally like $30. The whole corner was broken off. They marked it down 70% percent so i took that from being thirty dollars to being like nine dollars which is fantastic and that's enough plexiglass for a lot of different builds like i used it for this one i used it for the waterfall tank i've used it for a lot of different things so always make sure that you ask i mean if something's damaged ask for a discount if we take in consideration i paid nine dollars for the sheet of plexiglass that's actually about 20 cents worth of material not a dollar fifty let's calculate it as such all right well so now that we've talked about the tank let's talk about the pump so this particular pump right here is a zero through 50 gallon pump that I bought on Amazon for $7. I've tested this thing. It works really, really well. Then let's move over to the materials we're going to be using today. Now I have already got materials picked out as far as what I want to use. I got an old piece of driftwood that came out of a tank. This driftwood when I originally bought it was about $10, but you could actually find this for much cheaper if you order it on Amazon and things like that. I would say a smaller piece of driftwood like this, about $5. Now moving over here to these rocks, I buy this stuff in bulk. So we're going to calculate based on how much material we're actually using. This right here is probably maybe 80 cents worth of rock. And the reason is this is a regular five gallon Lowe's bucket. If you go to your local rock yard, they sell like slates and flagstone for your patios and things like that. But if you literally just look up stone yard or rock yard, you know, look for those types of things. You'll find one locally in your area. My particular one, and I've actually got two that I go to and they both do the same thing, but this particular type of stone which is you can either get Arizona or Colorado stone and this Colorado River stone is actually my favorite because it's a little bit darker in color but they only charge me seven dollars to fill that whole bucket up so we literally have about 80 cents worth of rock that we're using today now we're gonna move over here we have a plate of different size stones here and then we have a plate of different size stones here as well which everything from little tiny gravel up to bigger stone. This is some drainage rock, but it adds a good texture and some color. And I have this in that waterfall tank as well. The five gallon bucket for seven bucks is basically anything you can fit in that bucket. I filled it up with Colorado River Stone. I filled it up with some of this drainage rock to give texture, a bunch of gravel, and then smaller rock as well. All in for seven dollars. So if we calculate all of this, which we're not going to use all of this, we're talking about maybe a dollar fifty worth of rock right here. Looking over here, I have some leftover cork from my paladarian builds and a cork round like this we'll say six dollars worth of cork I have some odd and end pieces that I had left over from some driftwood or spider wood that I broke off or I needed to break off and cut off. I always keep this scrap material because you can always use this stuff. So we may use some of that today. We're gonna use some of this reptile cypress mulch bedding. And this whole bag right here was about $4. We'll probably literally use maybe 15 cents worth of it today. And then we have some coconut soil bedding. We'll probably use somewhere around a dollar's worth of this stuff today. This entire bag was only like $8. We'll also be using one one can of waterfall foam, which is usually on average about $10 a can. So I'm breaking this down on how much it would cost you for the materials you're using, not how much it would actually cost you to buy the materials. Because like I said, I keep all this stuff from previous builds and I use it over and over again to try to save money. With all that, I mean, we've got most of the big ticket items anyway in here. The only other thing that's really left is a plant. We're going to put one terrestrial plant in this tank because it's all we're going to have room for just simply because of the fact that it is a 10 gallon. 
Allen. Let's get into this build and we'll start talking about money more later on. All right, guys, well, we have the tank flipped over on its side here. And the reason is, is because we need to start figuring out the hardscape on this tank. So we're gonna actually be laying this stuff into the back of this tank right here. So we can start looking to see kind of what the scape is gonna look like. The first thing we need to start with is covering this box up. And this particular box, what we need to take in consideration is when we're covering this, is that we don't wanna cover the inlet holes with anything. We wanna make sure that there's proper water flow or access to the water from each one of these holes because that will be the intake into the pump. And essentially, the way the pump is gonna work is the water line is going to sit about here. This inlet will take the water in, drop the water down over some mechanical filtration, probably filter flow. Then there will be a level of biological filtration, which will probably be lava rock. And then the pump will sit at the bottom. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a line here. That would be where the top of the pump is. So we have this much room here for mechanical and biological filtration, which is plenty for five gallons of water. We want to hide this as best as we can. So what I'm going to use to hide this, this cork round. If we take this cork round and just set it over it, it gives us a nice aesthetic look. It gives plenty of room back here. We have to fill in the sides to make sure no fish can get back there but overall i think that that will be our cover for that you know we need to get all of our hardscape done and figured out i want this piece of driftwood to come in as well here and i'm going to move this over as much as i can to the side of the glass i don't want it to touch the glass because i want to be able to get over here and clean well the initial hardscape is done and as you can see kind of so we have some driftwood over here with some rocks we have this little rock shelf that's right there we have a piece of cork here that will serve a purpose. We have a piece of cork here that is actually hiding the filter box, as you can see in there. That piece there opens up to the bottom, and we have rocks tucked around the piece of driftwood. So now, all we need to do is go ahead and waterfall foam this stuff in, let it cure, and then we can start finishing this thing out. Alright, guys. The foaming is done. Now, I will tell you, this doesn't look like a whole lot right now. This rock up here is not foamed in. That's actually just sitting there for weight. Everything has been foamed in. Now, what we need to do is just simply let this stuff sit and dry. All right, guys. Well, all the foam has cured, and now it's just a matter of trimming this stuff back. Well, unfortunately, my camera glitched out while filming this next section, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to wait about 24 hours for this foam to cure. Now, you can actually start trimming this stuff back after a few hours once it's hard to the touch, and as you're breaking the foam away and you're using a knife, if you see any wet foam, cover it back up with a dry hard piece of foam and let it sit longer until it's completely done but you can use your fingers to break this stuff away or you can use a pocket knife i used a scraper a pocket knife a butter knife or a case knife depending on what you call it and my fingers really to break this stuff away there's no method to the madness you really want to get this stuff broken away and down as far as you possibly can and when you're done it should look something similar to this and what I've done is actually started to glue rocks down with silicone. And as you can see here, I'm putting a good amount of silicone on the back of the rock and pushing it in on top of the foam anywhere foam is left. I will continue this process until all of the foam is filled as much as I possibly can get it with the larger stone. Once that is complete, we'll come back with some smaller, finer, detailed stones. Moving over to the middle of the two pieces of cork, I'm going to go ahead and cover up the foam with some silicone here as well because we want to make this more naturalistic looking. So we're going to dust this with some coconut fiber here in just a moment. We have silicone in here between the two pieces of cork. We have silicone all around all these rocks and spread out over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually take some coconut fiber and start backfilling some of these open spots that have silicone on them with coconut fiber, which will give it a more natural naturalistic look. All right, guys. Well, the first set of cocoa fiber has been put in and it is all dry and everything is good. We're going to vacuum up all the excess, start putting more silicone on here, more coconut fiber, a bunch of rocks, a bunch of everything. And we're going to get this thing finished up. So let's do that now. All right. So we're now at the process where all we're going to do is just start siliconing rocks and coconut fiber into the spots, trying to cover up all of the black bone. So back in this corner here, what I want to do is I want to fill this whole section with rock 
and coconut fiber and I want to cover this seam from this rock here where there's foam being shown and I should have really done this before and I didn't so now I'm having to come back and do it after which is obviously a lot harder all right so I'm gonna use I have all the big rocks laid and then I used a smaller finer rock to kind of give it some more detail now that all that's in there there's a bunch of silicone that's still exposed so what I'm gonna do to cover that up is just come back in with coconut fiber and fully cover this with coconut fiber and then just start pushing that coconut fiber down into the silicone and into the rocks it'll make for a nice natural look so we're going to push all this stuff down in there we will let it sit and dry and we vacuum all this excess up you'll kind of get an idea of what i'm talking about Basically what I'm doing is filling in all of this glass area on the background with silicone. Any place where I want to hide glass is essentially what I'm doing. So I'm literally just pushing that silicone down into the glass. I'm doing the same thing up around the top as well. And we're gonna cover this with coconut fiber and rock and all kinds of things. Now that we have this thing fully covered with coconut fiber, we're gonna take our hand and we're just gonna start pushing this stuff in kind of hard actually because what you want to do is you want to push all of that rock all of that cypress mulch all of those you know all the fiber this coconut fiber you want to push all of it down in here you want to get it nice and adhered to the silicone you find these big clumps like this in here you want to break those up because those they'll stick but once they stick they'll still break up on their own which could result in leaving silicone exposed. And so far guys, this is kind of what it looks like, which isn't a whole lot yet, but it will be very soon. And we are gonna let this dry now. We'll come back, we'll vacuum out all this excess coconut fiber, and we'll check for any other little places we need to add any details. We'll get some water in this thing, we'll get all of this stuff working. So I'll meet you back here in a few hours once this stuff has cured. Three hours later. All right, guys. Well, the initial scape of this thing is finished. What we have left to do here is we need to test the water flow and we need to get our waterfall system set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a hose from this side. I'm going to drill a hole through here, run it through here so you can't actually see it behind the plant. It's going to come out like right there. And essentially, it'll just drain water across this big rock and down this rock into the water. So let's see how this works out and let's get that tested now. All right, well, we're gonna take the water and we're gonna wash all this stuff off as well as just to kind of get everything cleaned off here. Well, I dropped the pump down in there with a hose connected to it. The pump is in fact pumping water out. And what I'm thinking is, is that the waterfall is gonna come out right here, but I kind of like it, just subtle. Nothing crazy, just there. Well, we got this tank sitting where it's gonna go here. And I think because of the red color in the background and because of how dark it is, I'm actually gonna use a red substrate. Let me show you this here. So this is what this stuff looks like. And I think it's actually gonna look really good in the bottom of this tank. So we may add some other color to it as well, some more darker, larger stones and things like that. But we're gonna get this thing filled up with substrate real quick and then start the next portion of this process. I'm going to use my uh, trusty paintbrush, and if you guys are new to the channel, this is something I use when I'm trying to get substrate pushed around where I want it. So I am going to get all of this substrate just kind of push back into this tank. I'm going to add a little contrast to this red substrate. I'm going to add this black Colorado stone here, just right up underneath this branch. So we're going to add some more substrate and some smaller rocks around it to just give it a little more detail. We're just going to sprinkle some of these a little bit larger darker stones just kind of around the base of this rock it's kind of like that then we're also going to add a little more detail with some finer rock as well all right well we have the hose nice and hid where you can't see it and now i want to add a couple of more things to this we are going to add a plant into this section right up here so let's go ahead and get that done so we got a nice little tropical plant coming out of the top here All right, guys. Well, we have the waterfall plugged in. It is working. We have one more thing to add real quick. Now, this is something that I have not talked about actually adding to this tank, but it is a super cool feature. 
I only paid like $10 for this part. What it does is it diffuses the water and actually causes a nice little fog into the tank. So it's actually super cool. Let me show you that now. We have this fog rolling out of the top of this over the top of the water, which is a super cool thing to have. Right, guys well hopefully you enjoyed this tank build and I know that it was a very very long video and a lot of talking but I wanted to make sure that I went through every single step in as much detail as possible so my only hope for this video is is that you learned something from it and if you did comment below and let me know but also I want to know what do you think we should put in here I'm thinking a beta and, and like I said that's because it's five gallons of water essentially and I wanted to give you guys something that you would be able to do yourself and it's really not that hard to put one of these tanks together like this. I mean, the waterfall foam is not very forgiving when you're actually applying it, but once it's dry, it's easy to cut away, and then it's easy to cover with some natural element, such as a rock, coconut fiber, a piece of wood, a piece of cork, something like that. So give it a try, and if you happen to do that, make sure you post a picture on Instagram or tag me in your story so I can repost and share. I really like seeing that kind of stuff. So with all of that being said hopefully you enjoyed this and like I said hopefully you learned something today during this video I really appreciate you guys watching I appreciate all the support on the channel you don't understand how much I appreciate it every view that I get on this video results in some sort of monetary gain from the ads on the video and that really helps the channel grow and it's going to help us continue to bring and build bigger and better things on the channel so with all of that little Max Robert here has something to say to you. If you haven't followed us on Instagram or subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that now. If you want to buy Christopher Scott merch, go to thefanaticbrand.com. If you want to win some, make sure you have the notification bell turned on. We're going to do a few merch giveaways during Vlogmas. With all that, we'll see you the next time.